IBM have opened applications to their 2025 data analytics degree apprenticeship. In this video, I'm going to go through step by step what I would do if I was applying to this degree apprenticeship and I wanted to give myself the best possible chance. Just before we get into that, let me introduce myself if you don't know me. My name is Owen. I'm a degree apprentice and I help people get degree apprenticeships in the engineering, technology and finance industries. Last year, I helped a whole bunch of people get into companies like Amazon, JLR, HSBC, KPMG, just to name a few. And then also, this is another one of my students here who followed the advice I gave him and he ended up getting into an IBM degree apprenticeship. Okay, so let's get into this. This is step-by-step step what I would do if I was applying to IBM and I wanted to give myself the, the best chance possible. Okay, and you can find the link in the description to go and apply to this data analytics. First things first, I'd get work experience. If I haven't got any work experience or I don't have any data analytics specific work experience, then I do this one right here, Barclays Data Analytics. Barclays, they're a well-known company and it's gonna be in data analytics as a project you're gonna do, which is gonna be great experience for applying to this IBM Data Analytics degree apprenticeship. The next thing I would do, if I haven't already, is I would complete a massive open online course or a MOOC. Okay, MOOCs are a very good way to show to the recruiter that you're proactive, you've got a growth mindset, you've got a willingness to learn. You basically, putting time out of your day to go and work on yourself, learn about data analytics. It shows you're dedicated to this sort of space and this industry. Okay. So there's three websites you can go to Coursera, edX and FutureLearn, and I'll go and do a MOOC on data analytics. Okay. Or some, something around that topic. Okay. Now I'd make sure this MOOC is less than eight hours because there are MOOCs which are like 50 hours, a hundred hours long, which people obviously do over the course of a few months. With this data analytics degree apprenticeship for IBM, you want to be applying as soon as possible so you don't have time to suddenly do a 50 hour MOOC. So I'd look for one which is less than eight hours, maybe like a four hour, six hour MOOC or something like that and get started on that one. Now ideally you'll finish that MOOC before you come to apply. So you can just finish the MOOC, whack it in your CV, boom, go and apply, okay? But maybe you won't have time to complete the MOOC. And this is a question people ask me, can I mention something I haven't completed yet if you're like halfway through a work experience or you're halfway through a MOOC? It's absolutely fine, you can mention it, just don't lie. Okay, so just don't say in your application, I have completed this MOOC if you haven't completed it. Just say you're currently in the process of it, no problem. So you could say a sentence like this, currently in the process of working through the eight hour MOOC, whatever, by the University of Manchester. So far I've learned about key principles of data analytics such as da 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 and da da da. Studying for this course alongside volunteering at the local charity shop and completing my schoolwork has developed my time management skills as I've to balance competing priorities, a skill which would be highly advantageous in the workplace. You can just insert a paragraph like that into the key achievement section of your CV. Okay, and I'll get onto your CV a bit later, but you can just bear this in mind. This is where you can put it. Now notice some key things with this paragraph I've written here. First of all, I wrote the time, okay? I didn't just say like, oh, I completed a MOOC. I said specifically an eight hour MOOC, because then it shows I've dedicated a lot of time. It's not just a 30 minute thing. It's not just a one hour thing. It was eight whole hours of my day. And the second thing is I specifically mentioned the training provider or the people that run the course. Okay, so University of Manchester, or it could be some random university, it could be some random company. Always mention them, even if you don't think it's important, just because it gives a bit of credibility to the course you're doing by mentioning the people who did it. Okay, so if I hadn't done a MOOC, that is what I'd be doing. And if I didn't have time to complete it, no problem. I'd just put a sort of interim, in progress paragraph like this in my CV, where I say I'm still in the process of working through it and just talk about what you've learned so far. The next thing I would do is I'd do some deep research on IBM, looking for key things like their skills and their company values. Okay, so I've done some research already before this video, and I'll just share it with you now to sort of give you a starting point, and then you can go and do a bit more research yourself. So from the job description, you can see these are the skills they're looking for, because these are the ones they were mentioning. Innovative, collaboration, growth mindset, courageous, curious, decisive, open to feedback. That's the sort of skills they were looking for there from that job description. And then these are some other key skills that I would also like consider mentioning because although IBM haven't specifically mentioned these I think these will be very important for data analytics degree apprenticeships okay so I'll, I'll get into a second what to do with this research but just for now go onto some of the websites and go and do this research okay I've also seen their values they have three values dedication to client success innovation and then trust and personal responsibility in all relationships so whenever there's a company they're going to have these values you want to think about how can you align with these values to show you're an employee who's going to fit with their company and then final thing is some of the key focus areas of IBM, this is like the sort of industries or sectors they're looking at, the sort of innovations they're looking at, things like artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, cybersecurity, sustainability, quantum computing. They're very big in these industries. So this is something to just bear in mind as we go out, go with the next steps of this protocol. Okay. And here are some links for research here. There's a US and UK website. I'd recommend checking out both just because they have different news stories. So it would be good to see. So potentially maybe the United States one would be even better research because most likely all the people in the UK who are applying to this degree apprenticeship are probably going to go to the UK website. 
So you can actually stand out a bit if you show some unique research. Everyone probably might mention the same things from the UK website. If you go to the US one, then you might get some more interesting things. So I'd recommend going to both there. Then there's a career website which talks a lot more about their values and, and the company and that sort of thing. And also there's a link to their sustainability thing. So it's great. A lot of these companies care about sustainability. So if you mention sustainability in your CV, it's going to look very good. Okay. So that's the re that's the research I've done so far. And those are the links for you to go and do a bit more research. And in case I haven't mentioned this Notion document, it's completely free. You can just find it in the description um, down below and you'll get access to all these resources. So you've sort of got a copy of everything. Okay. So after doing that research, I would then go about some webinars. Okay. Because remember here when I specifically said these key focus areas, this is what like IBM are sort of very ahead of the industry and or they're very very focused on compared to a lot of to like other companies like sort of you could call it industry leaders i guess you want to show how you have done research on these areas your interest in these areas too to show you'd be a good fit for ibm so i've linked a couple of webinars here which basically correspond to these exact ones here so we've got one on artificial intelligence by amazon okay blockchain cloud computing cybersecurity, um data is that data sustainability essentially and quantum computing okay so what I would do is I'd probably do one or two of these webinars and then go and as well mention that on your CV. I did this webinar with Amazon about artificial intelligence. It was really interesting because I learned about the da, 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 right? And then it shows you have the interests that IBM have, okay? So it's going to look really good. Again, it's proactive. You're going out your way to learn about these topics. It shows you're dedicated to the industry because you're going out your way to learn about these topics. Okay, so here's just a few suggestions for you here, but go and find your own by all means. So have a look at these topics. Just Google cloud computing webinar, see what comes up. Cybersecurity webinar, right? Sustainability webinar, artificial intelligence webinar, see what comes up. Um, or, or if not, you can just have a click here and there's some good ones for you here. Okay, so once I've done that webinar, I'd say I'm now ready to sort of finalize my CV. Okay, so with your CV, I would go and include all the research from the previous steps. And ensuring that I ticked off as many desirable skills, research, and values as possible. Okay, so that's what all this research here was amounting to. This is what you want to include in your CV. Okay, you don't want to do all this research and then just do nothing with it. It's all there, ready to go with your CV. So I'm not going to go into the like full structure of how to write a CV right now because I've covered that in a different video. But essentially, I'd write a two-page CV with the following sections: details, personal statement, education, work experience, and key achievements. The reason I say two pages is because you can fit more in. It's like you can fit more work experience, more key achievements. All of my CVs were two pages, and I got eight degree apprenticeship offers. Um, so I think two pages is absolutely fine for a CV, and I 100% recommend doing two pages because one page I just don't think you can fit enough stuff in. Okay, and as you're going through, writing down your work experience, your key achievements, you can come and mention the webinar you've done. You can come and mention the course you've done or you're in progress doing. You can mention the work experience that you've done. Okay, and as you're talking about these, talking about this work experience, these key achievements, talk about what you've, what skills you've developed during it. Okay, so don't just mention that you did a course. Link that into how that's given you time management skills. Or maybe during that course, there were some activities you had to do which developed your numerical skills. Okay. These ones are really key for this data analytics one. Data driven and numerical skills. You want to make sure you're ticking these off. Analytical skills. Okay, so it's as you go through your CV, you want to try and make sure, honestly, as many of these keywords as possible you've ticked off in your CV. This is like the exact protocol I do when I was applying. Just look at the job description. Every single skill they're looking for, tick, 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 tick. Because then that literally makes you the perfect candidate because they've asked for a candidate and you meet all the criteria. Therefore, by definition, you are the perfect candidate. Now, obviously, you could go and mess it up in the interviews, which is why you need to go and practice interviews. But in terms of this initial application, it by default makes you the perfect candidate if you meet all of their criteria. Okay, so if you want more about your CV, you can go and check out that video there. Um, but basically, include all that research, those the skills, the values, the webinars, the work experience, and all that sort of thing. Okay. Now, in the rest of the application form, they have a couple of things. Most of it is just sort of filling out your details, like putting in your education, your A-levels, your address, um, just putting in like your work experience, just like filling out with the dates and that sort of thing. But there's another section which I just wanted to cover because it might be unfamiliar to some of you guys. And it's basically where it gives you a list of skills. So it's basically you can put up to a maximum of 50. You're never going to get anywhere near 50. But it's basically a list of skills. Now, this isn't talking about soft skills. Okay, so, so far, we've talked about soft skills, communication, innovation creativity teamwork presentation skills confidence that's all soft skills okay and mainly that is the focus with degree apprenticeships okay because at the end of the day we're not 40 years old we haven't worked for a company for 20 years we've literally just come out of school most of us maybe some of you are on a gap year never really worked like a proper um job um in terms of like in the tech industry it's like may maybe you were like a waiter or like a cashier at tesco's right that's about it so a lot of our applications are focused on these soft skills however occasionally 
they go into the more technical skills and this is what is actually here this list of skills is specifically asking about technical skills the reason for this is because I think they've just given a, ge a generic application form which they give to everyone. So like when they give this application form to like a 40 year old, it's fair enough because that 40 year old has done a whole bunch of certifications and all this sort of thing. We haven't, so it's a bit dodgy, okay? So like most of the skills on this list are like some random certifications for some random like special thing, right? So it's like something that some professionals would have done. So most of it isn't relevant, okay? But I've had a look through to find which ones would be relevant for us just starting and which ones you'd put. So I'd have to look through. These are basically the ones I would put. Okay, I'd see if there's any relevant certifications or softwares which you can mention. This was about it, okay? But I think these are still really key to mention, okay? Microsoft Office, so basically the, the way these skills work is it's like a drop-down list where you can just drop it down and like choose the one. You, you can't like type anything. It's just like selecting the ones out. They probably have like a big library of a thousand ones. 900 of them aren't relevant to us, okay? But these are the ones that are relevant. With these skills, they, they come, like this is the format. They come with a category and then like a like a sort of item. So for example, they have a category of Microsoft Office and they have a whole bunch of them like Microsoft Office, Office Excel, Microsoft Office Outlook, Microsoft Office PowerPoint, Microsoft Office Word. And so you basically go to that category and tick the relevant ones in the category like Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, Word. This one's gonna be really useful because these Microsoft Office ones you're gonna be using. And by the way, this, like, this is actually a very high leverage task because a lot of people aren't gonna have bothered with this because they'll have looked at the list of skills, they'll have seen it some random stuff and they probably will have put nothing. But if you come in here and just add these couple of things, Microsoft Office, it's gonna be useful. So companies, likely they're gonna use Outlook. Most companies use Outlook. So this is just gonna good gonna be good to show that you have these IT skills and you're ready to get straight up to date with the software. Okay. Now let me move this one up here because this one makes a bit more sense. If you've got any programming language, you can go put them in. It'll be under the category programming programming language, and then just look for what it is. Python, C sharp, Java, MATLAB, or whatever it is. You can put that in there. Now these ones are a bit different, but I wanted to mention these because specifically this is a data analytics degree apprenticeship. Okay. So there is a category of skills called social media platforms and then it's got like social media platforms youtube social media platforms instagram social media platforms facebook social media platforms reddit right <laughs> I don't, you're probably not going to mention reddit right but i was just thinking about this if i was applying to this company i would put social media platforms youtube and then there's also another category which is analytics and research social media analytics because doing this youtube channel i've had experience of going through the data looking at the analytics see what videos work see like ctr um, views retention all this sort of thing so i've got like an experience of using data so if i were to right now go and apply to a data an analytics degree apprenticeship i would mention that because it's good experience so potentially if you've done a similar thing maybe you've run a part-time youtube channel or you've got like a TikTok account or maybe you have like an Instagram account because I think I've, I've never really used Instagram uh, properly but I think on Instagram you have like a there's like a thing where you can see how many people looked at your post and how many people liked it or something it's not as comprehensive as YouTube analytics but I think there are some sort of analytics there so potentially that's another one you can mention and sort of utilize to your advantage um social media platforms youtube or instagram or whatever and then do this one analytical analytics and research social media analytics okay because that'll be good experience um to help with this data analytics degree apprenticeship a lot of you might not have even thought of that one and then that's another one you can go and literally now that i've mentioned it go and put this in key achievements just one for this one if you guys like have ever run like a social media like part-time or anything like that just go and put in key achievements see i've run this um social media platform for six months posting twice a day um, this required creativity to come up with content ideas for the post. And it also required an analytical skills to analyze my analytic. That's probably saying analytics too many times in one sentence, but you know what I'm saying. You'd put a sentence just saying like this required analytical skills to look at my metrics and see how I can improve um, viewer retention or improve viewership rates or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So that's just another idea I've thought of on the spot there. Mention that in key achievements if you've done a social media thing, okay? Because that's good specifically for data analytics, okay? And those are basically the skills I would mention there, okay? Now, in terms of LinkedIn, a lot of people have LinkedIn. Um, shout out to my LinkedIn warriors out there. Um, I personally didn't use LinkedIn when I came to the final application. And the reason for this is because honestly, my LinkedIn wasn't that good when it came to apply. So I ended up actually just deleting my LinkedIn because recruiters have told me if you don't have a perfect LinkedIn, it's actually worse. You like you have to go all or nothing. Either it's perfect or just get rid of it. If you have like a mediocre LinkedIn where half of it's filled out, it's kind of okay. It actually gives you a worse impression. So this is basically the criteria I'd follow uh, with your LinkedIn. Go check. Does it have a profile photo, a banner, a bio, and about section? Experience, education, license, and certifications. If all this stuff is filled out, up to date, then perfect. You can use LinkedIn. If there's even one of these or one or two of these which you haven't done, either number one, go and do it before you apply, or just don't mention your LinkedIn at all.
okay because if you don't have a profile picture it doesn't look professional you don't have update experience on there it looks like you've got no experience if you don't have an about section it shows you're not dedicated you're not proactive enough you didn't put enough time and you're not really committed because you couldn't be bothered to write an about section okay so that's the criteria i'd follow all or nothing if you've got that boom use your linkedin go drop the link in your cv um if not just get rid of your LinkedIn, okay? And then also this is some bonus as well. If you want to go to the top 1%, just make sure you've done a couple of posts in like the last month saying, talking about the things you've done. And also you can get a recommendation from like a manager, supervisor or teacher just to basically show off that you're you're a good person, you're a good employer, whatever, okay? So if you want more information on like these sort of top 1% things here, you can go and check out this video I've done here. Just go to the 9 minutes 22 section and you can go and listen to how I've explained that one there, okay? So moving on to the next step. I would apply as soon as possible. So I couldn't see a closing date on this role, which basically means this role can close whenever and likely it's going to close pretty quickly, okay? Because IBM is going to be a popular one, okay? So here's the link there. You can go and click on that link to go and apply and yeah, just do it as soon as possible. So basically get get through this step-by-step -step roadmap as soon as possible. That's what I'd be doing. I'd literally, if, if I was someone else seeing this video, I would try and get this application done within the next 48 hours, okay? And then once I've applied, here's what I'd be doing. I'd start practicing for interviews and assessment centers. Because that's what's going to happen. Once you've done this, you're going to go through the application process, online testing, maybe a video interview, interviews, assessment centers, whatever it is. And honestly, if you've never done an interview before, you're not too confident with interviews, it's really good to get the practice because practice is the only way you're going to get better. Okay, so you can check out this YouTube video I've done here on interviews. And you can also follow my Twitter where I've basically got a whole bunch of resources to help with interviews there if you just click on that post so you can go and do that and then finally just a final blog if you do want mock interviews and one-to-one -one messaging with me to sort of help you um, get better in your assessment centers then you can go and join my coaching program you go and click the link here to get more information about that one okay so that is what i do that's the step-by-step -step roadmap for if i was applying to the ibm degree apprenticeship i hope that has helped and i'll see you in a bit peace out